Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm your pal Cal and today we'll be going over my two weeks of testing with the LilyGo LoRa T-Pager, an IoT device by the company LilyGo that have brought us so many cool devices like the T-Deck, the T-Deck Pro, the T-Deck Plus, the T-Beam, the T-Beam Supreme, the T-Display, T-Everything, T-Everything with these people. This is the LilyGo LoRa T-Pager. The LilyGo LoRa T-Pager is a mesh-tastic radio as well as doubling as a very nice ethical hacking and penetration testing tool. It comes with some really neat features like GPIO pins, a Wi-Fi antenna, a LoRa antenna, a headphone jack, a full QWERTY keyboard, a full color display, a speaker, a built-in microphone, an SD card slot, and a lot, lot more. This was a fun device to test, but it was kind of a love-hate relationship, and let's get into why. Now, at first glance, I can tell you that this device looks fantastic. It just, they didn't put too much thought into it. They were really focused on making a very nice competitor to the card pewter. And just some of the features that are in this device haven't been fully utilized in the Bruce firmware. For example, there's an RFID reader in here, but if we go into RFID, nothing will actually happen. It will crash the entire system. We go to read tag and let's, let's grab it. Yeah, there we go immediately restarts. The full QWERTY keyboard is incredibly welcome. It comes in handy when running Meshtastic. The issue that a lot of people are having, including myself, is the space bar and the shift button start falling apart rather easy. If you continuously use this device and put it in your pocket the wrong way, the keyboard might actually rip apart, starting with the space bar and then to the shift key. And that's annoying. I've emailed LilyGo about this problem and I've gotten no response except for that one mass email where they said that new revisions would not have this problem. The rotary encoder might just be my favorite feature in this device. And the reason why I say that is I can click anything and just hit the back button and go immediately back without hitting main menu in the Bruce firmware or anything. It operates kind of like how the Android back button works. Now the GPIO pins on this device are awesome. And the reason why I say that is because you can hot swap a CC1101 on the left side of the GPIO pins. So you can plug one in, go straight to RF and then go to spectrum and it will work, allowing you to copy and relay sub gigahertz signals. Now, they call this device the Unicorn, and the reason why a lot of people call it the Unicorn is because they have a custom NRF24 module on LilyGo's website. It's around like five to seven dollars, and it's made just for the T-Pager. We can plug it in as well as being able to mount it to those mounting holes right there, and it looks like, as you can see, a unicorn. But I do like this board because it gives it a really nice, a really nice look when you set all the antennas up. In the NRF24 tab, we can go to Spectrum and yeah, it works pretty well. Now, sometimes when I'm in Spectrum, it doesn't just go back immediately and that's kind of annoying, a little buggy, but still, it does work eventually. On the back, we have our RFID module right here, as well as one antenna tuned to 2.4 gigahertz and the other tuned to 915. Now, depending on your region, this might be tuned to 433 or 868. It all depends on where you are. Mine is tuned to 915. One thing that bothered me is these three buttons. They're not labeled at all. So you kind of have to guess or memorize which one is reset, which one is boot, and which one is power. We also have an SD card slot right here and a USB-C that supports USB ODG. Now, it might not matter to everybody, but I like the fact that there's a headphone jack, being able to turn this into an MP3 player at any given time. Now, the fact that it runs the launcher firmware means that we can swap between different custom firmware. For example, we can go to Downloads, and from here, we can go to Meshtastic Fancy UI. Since we started off on the Bruce firmware, let's continue on some of the awesome features that you can use with the Bruce firmware on the T-Pager. It has a built-in GPS. That means you can war drive while not using it as a LoRa radio. And Bruce just got LoRa functionality, albeit not the best. It's still, you know, a work in progress, but there is LoRa in Bruce, which is a big deal for this device. Here's the problem though. The battery life on this device is not as good as some of the other IoT devices I've tested in the past. For example, you get almost three times the battery life on a card pewter than you do on the LilyGo LoRa T-Pager. And this could be for a lot of reasons, but war driving on the card pewter, having it on the entire time, you can get almost 18 to 20 hours of continuous use on a full charge. With the LilyGo LoRa T-Pager, you get six to 10 hours, 10 hours being the absolute absolute best test that we had, six hours being the absolute worst of it just 
pretty much trying to connect and reconnect. And it did a good job of staying connected. I gotta give it props there. The GPS is very decent. Now for right now, we're gonna focus on one of these antennas, that being the 2.4 gigahertz antenna for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The range for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on this device is really good. As a matter of fact, it outperformed the card pewter, it outperformed the T-Deck, it outperformed the T-Embed, it outperformed almost every IoT device in regards to the 2.4 gigahertz band, which was really impressive. That is one of my main talking points about this device. I was in, like impressed, like thoroughly impressed. But when it came to LoRa, that's where I was disappointed. Now here's the thing, the retractable antennas are a really cool feature. I do like it, but the range on the LoRa antenna is atrocious. On our best test, we barely got a half a mile. On our worst test, we barely got a quarter of a mile. So when it comes to the antennas, the Wi-Fi antenna is good. The LoRa antenna is horrible and it's not replaceable unless you definitely mod the absolute hell out of it. And I don't want to do that. It looks great and it looks discreet. The battery life ain't worth a damn though, but it is a nice device. Lilygo has this device advertised as the LoRa T-Pager and LoRa is supposed to be its primary function. That's not a case at all. LoRa just so happens to be a feature in this device. It's like this device was made for the Bruce firmware and it just so happens that it can be a Mishtastic radio if you so need it to be. It's almost like, you know, one of those emergency 911 buttons you have if you have no service on your phone. That's kind of what this is. It's a nice feature to have but it shouldn't be advertised as its primary function. The fact that we can't replace the antenna and maybe give it some more range without heavily modding this device is not ideal. We're gonna swap over to the Meshtastic fancy UI real quick. Now, as much as I knock the range, the fact that I can swap between tabs using this rotary encoder is fantastic. And having this type of Meshtastic device that I can just kind of easily navigate through and send messages is really cool. And the fact that the GPS does eventually connect rather fast when you're outside is also a really nice feature. It's just, once again, the range, man. The range is insufferable. Now, I did come across this issue where it'll say that there are zero online after having sent the message. For example, we're going to send out a message. We're going to write in hello world. And I know for a fact that, there we go. My N37 has received the message, but it says zero online. And sometimes it'll just say failure. This is inconsistent. This is another issue I had way more often than I'd like to admit. When I want to go switch or download something straight to the SD card, it'll just say download failed. But when I want to install it over the air, it'll install just fine. This is an annoying feature to have. Now, of course, we can fix this by just downloading Bruce directly to the SD card and being able to swap whenever we want, but it's supposed to work over the air. And that is beyond annoying. Now, after two weeks of testing, this is my takeaway points from this. This should not be advertised as a lower radio first. This is a fun IoT device and honestly the Bruce firmware makes it worth playing around with honestly. And having Bruce now have LoRa functionality means that this device will be a lot more fun in the coming future. I really hope that they add RFID support in the future because that would make it an awesome Flipper Zero contender. But with that being said, the Meshtastic UI on this device runs a lot better than the card pewter ADV, but the ADV has way better range than the Lilygo LoRa T-Pager. On top of all that, we can't switch the antennas out for something better, and that would be so cool if we could, because that would make it an even better device. But the keyboard is falling apart rather easily. It is made very well. I like the size, shape, and form factor. I like the extra features that are on it, and I really like the GPS. So if you wanted this device in terms of a LoRa radio on a beach with some friends or a neighborhood LoRa radio, that's, it works. But if you were looking for something long range, truly long range, then grab something from Lilygo that is actually long range, like the T-Deck, the T-Deck Pro, or the T-Deck Plus. I don't know how many T-Decks they have by now. Or the T-Beam. I love the T-Beam. I've had the T-Beam as a home base for so long, and I do recommend it. But as far as lower radios, this it needs some work. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for the love and support. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, or else the next time you go out with a the radio, there'll be nobody to connect to. We'll see you next time.